Hey, this is Kurt Roscoe of Stone Glacier. I'm going to take you through the feature sets and the setup of the R3 line of backpacks. As a review, we have three different sizes. We have the 3300, we have the 5900, and we have the 7000. All three bags are interchangeable on the R3 frame. The R3 frame is based off of our crux frame. 150 pound load rating has extended webbing on the shoulder straps when you wear it with plates. Also has added volume on the side for extra si uh, side pockets on the hip belt. Now there are some common features in between all three bags. First, we have side stretch pockets. Next, on the inside of the bag, against the frame, you have molly grid webbing for adding internal molly pockets for organization. On the back side of each bag, back behind your head, is a Velcro panel that can be opened up so you can run comm wires out if you have a radio on the inside. And the last is that we have side bags that add about 1,800 cubic inches of volume, and these are detachable and can be added to any one of the three bags. Next, we're going to take you through how to install the side bags as well as how to use the load shelf for carrying gear and heavy weapons. The side bags are compatible between all three sizes of bags. Uh, they have the same attachment system, same tri slides in the same place. There is a left and a right on the side bags. So you look at this front face, that is going to face out towards the front of the bag when we attach it. So we'll start by, this is a right side bag. When I roll this 5900 up, you can see the three tension locks right here. These are going to mate up to the webbing tails, the three webbing tails that you have on the side bag. Simply thread these through the tri slides. You'll notice I am doing this from the back side. This helps nest it. And then I'm going to run the webbing back through to lock it in. That one's locked in. Do the same thing on the other two. And make sure when you tighten it, Make sure that tri slide comes tight up against the seam. That's going to keep the least amount of slop out of the bag and give you the most adjustment. I have already attached the side bag to the other side. Did it in the exact same way. And once I have that on, you have a male and female. Those connect back together, and that'll give you 1,800 cubic, in cubic inches of extra space. Detaching the bag from the frame to access the load shelf for either gear carry or heavy, heavy weapon carry is the same between all three bags. So a quick review. On the back side, in between the frame and the bag is a tension lock. You'll see right down here. I'm going to pop that one free. I'll do the same thing on the other side. Next step, detach the load lifters, side lock buckles. Once we have those detached, now three side compression straps on the one side, three side compression straps on the other, and the whole bag will lift up off of the frame and roll back out of the way. This gives you access to the load shelf as well as the straps and the weapon carry system. If you want to use the load shelf at this point, you're able to put gear, pelican cases, hard goods, whatever you might have, roll the bag back over the top and we'll show you how to compress down. For this demonstration, we're going to show you how to use the, the weapon sling. Attack weapon sling. The bottom portion attaches to the frame. There is one tail that comes off of the right hand side of the frame. Simply weave that through the tension lock. You can adjust the ride height as this is going to capture the butt of the rifle. So if you want it up above, as tall as you can so you can still sit down, you can tighten it up a little bit higher. If you want the muzzle to ride a little bit lower on the frame, you can lower it down. We'll put it right there in the middle. On the frame itself, you have two compression straps. These are auto lock buckles. 
These are going to retain the rifle into the center of the frame. These straps can be moved lower. You'll see that there are loops down lower if you prefer to move that strap down depending on where your turrets ride, your mag rides, to get a clean wrap over the rifle. This is where this rifle runs. So I'm going to set the rifle in, butt stock goes in there, up over the top with the buckle, tighten that down with the auto lock. On the top one, you can run it straight over. If you do want to position it, depending on where you have your bipod or how you want it to ride on one side of the frame or the other, you can take a half wrap on it and then connect it back in. This one rides well right where it's at, so I'm going to tighten that down. Once I have that, next step is just roll the bag back over. We're going to connect the compression straps first. So you have your three side compression straps. I'll connect the ones on the other side as well. On the back side of the frame, you have another compression strap that will come back to the original location of your load lifters. Tighten that in, that pulls the bag tight to the frame. I'll do the same thing on this side. Your last step are going to be the load lifters back into the top of the frame. Now the rifle's secured in there. On the right side of the pack, there's a grab handle. So when you take the pack off, grab by the grab handle, throw it on the ground, you're going to see five black buckles. And those are your keys to get to the rifle quickly. So once we throw it down, hit your five black buckles, pack rolls out of the way, two in the center, and the rifle's out. So you can have it out in just a few seconds. That's a quick rundown on our R3 accessories and pack line. If you have any questions on anything we've gone over, please feel free to give us a call here at the shop.